Hi, I'm Tom D, and in this tutorial I want to show you how to calculate time difference in Elasticsearch and in the Kibana. To make it working, I will show you how to use runtime fields, both as a search queries and as index mapping. The first activity is to start Elasticsearch and start Kibana. So start from creating the Kibana network and run Elasticsearch container. Once this container is up and running, open another window on another terminal and run Kibana. You need standard output to be visible because it will be later on used for authentication purpose, so keep it open. Now, in another window, run command to reset Elasticsearch password and set up password as you wish. Once it's done, create an enrollment token for Kibana. Open a Kibana in a web browser and paste that enrollment token over there. Click on Configure Elastic. Now switch to Kibana standard output, copy verification code and place it here. Verify. Now Kibana is up and running, so you can log in using the Elastic username and your password. Kibana is started and configured with Elasticsearch. As a test data, I prepared for you two examples. First is skyscrapers, which contain fields building name, start construction, and end construction. Building name is a text type and start and end construction is a data type. Second example is ETL jobs, index name, which will have job name, start execution, and end execution fields. Start and end execution fields have nanosecond precision. Open up Postman and create put request. Here specify the name of the index, which is skyscrapers, skyscrapers and put your credentials, Elastic and your created password. Switch to body section, raw, JSON, and here specify your mapping settings, as I show you already. So those three fields will be created in the index. Index is created, index mapping is created, and now to obtain that, mapping definition, switch to, sorry, switch to the get and run this query again. And you can see that the mapping definition is there already. So now it's time to populate that index with the data. Switch to the post, raw, slash, underscore bug, as a bug load. Now put your data here and remember to leave one empty line at the end. Send the request and to check if data is there, switch from bug to search API request. Now you can see the data is there. Time to create another mapping for another index, which will be ETL jobs. So switch to put raw and here specify your index mapping. Now switch to the bulk, place your data, leave last line as an empty line and run that query. Data is created. To confirm, type search, switch to the get none and send it. Data is there. Calculate time difference between start and stop execution. Place the search query with the definition of runtime mapping for the duration field. That field is a type long and as a value has a script to execute. The script has an emit command. Is an emit that means return. Chrono unit is a package that contains this function to calculate the nanoseconds between two 
dates that has this nanosecond precision. So now I have a definition of the duration field and I'm referring to that duration field in the field section. Source is false, which means that it will only return the duration field. And that's how it is. There is only duration value. It, in this case, it's just one nanosecond because that is a time difference. Now, if you want to check how the mapping is looking like, go to the URL and change the search into the mapping. Now it, you can see that it doesn't contain any new field because it was the runtime field used only during the search and it wasn't used in a mapping definition. Another situation when you want to calculate the time difference can be in the data view. To create data view, in the Kibana, go to the stack management data views and here specify your index pattern. Let's use sky scrappers. As a timestamp field, choose start or end. And as a name, specify your data view name. Let's say sky scrappers. Create this data view. Now in this data view, you can create new field. So click on that and set value. Type will be long because that's the return value that I'm expected. And name you can specify building, uh, building years. As a script, you are using exactly the same definition that you used before in the example when you search the data. So there is uh, two variables specified, start and end. And there is one more variable of a long type that will hold the difference in nanosecond between those two years. Now save it. And you can see there is a new runtime field in the data view definition. To see how it works, go to the discovery. And here you need to change the date because I used here long back um, events. So years uh, will be, let's say, 58 years. Maybe 58 years, it's enough, 59, and years ago. So it will cover that periods. Now you can see the list of the documents. I will modify the, the view to be more visible the building years column and here one more field can be added like end construction so you see the result the building years which is the time difference between the two other columns now when you go to the mapping definition is an intact no changes in the mapping so it's only kept in the data view definition And now last example, you will update mapping definition. This is exactly the same painless script that was used in the previous two examples, which now, right now is put as a mapping definition. So there is a runtime field and you can check it with get command and you can see the result of the mapping right now, that there is a one more field as a runtime field. So this field will not appear in the source when you search uh, when you search the index data. So you can see there is there is no such field, right? It's only those fields that are not runtime that are that are in the source. So now to see the that field, you need to explicitly in the search uh, request you need to explicitly mention that field in the fields section, and I can also display it all together with the source, changing the source to true. So now you can see all the data along with the source and calculated field.